Welcome to another inspirational teaching from Tim Warden Communications. Our mission is to honor God and deliver all his benefits. Better not going shocking confession to make today. Are you ready? Hindi ko alam kung ako ang ready. Ang ko confess ko sa inyo, hindi ako perfect. Are you surprised? <laughs> hindi talaga ako perfect na father. Actually, I'm just learning. Kung may school of fathers, nasa kinder one ako. Hindi ako perfect husband. I'm still learning how to be a husband. Hindi pa rin ako perfect pastor, leader. So I'm not perfect. Do you still love me? <laughs> Alam mo, there's a false idea. Maling akala ng mga tao na you have to be perfect before, or, you ha- or at least you have to pretend to be f- perfect to, to be in church to, to be near the, the, the very presence of God akala na mga tao na dapat na church is for people who are good banal people sa mga tao na ang buhay nila is, is okay their family situation is smooth they are uh, moral people they don't uh, make mistakes Kala ng mga tao, ganun. Church is for this kind of people. Or at least the people who think they're like that. But I want to share with you that it's okay if you are not okay. Alam mo, mahirap sagutin na hindi a okay. Pag namumusta sa'yo, hey, kumusta? Kumusta? Anong sagot? Okay lang. Okay, fine. Ito, buhay pa rin. O minsan, ganun na. Sas- sasagutin mo, okay lang. When in fact, sa totoo lang, minsan hindi ka okay. Liar. <laughs> Liar. Sabi mo, okay. Pero deep inside, hindi naman talagang okay. And so, ang tanong is, is it okay ba? Pag hindi ako okay? And ang sagot doon is, yes, it's okay. Because even sa Biblia, ang daming mga people of God Prophets even, people that God used in great ways. These people were many times not okay. Noah got drunk. David committed adultery. Samson was a womanizer. Paul was a hit man. Peter had a potty mouth. Nagmura siya. You know, people, Jesus even called Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan. There were times the greatest men and women of God they're really not perfect. Just like you <laughs> and me. Sino nakaka-relate? Na sometimes I'm not okay. My family is not okay. Mismo, dysfunctional tayo sa pag-iisip, personality natin. E- even dito sa SFCC, in the San Fernando Christian community, we are a bunch of people that has issues, hurts, hang-ups, Mga habits. We are all a product. You know, buhay natin is a, a product of various sin. Personal sin ko at sin ng iba. Hindi naman lahat ng gulo sa buhay mo is because of your own sin. Minsan, sin ng parents mo, sin ng kapitbahay mo, eh, eh, damay ka. Or maybe your own sin, your wrong choices. Kaya, through the years, Pag sa dami mong wrong choices, ganito na ang gulo sa family. Ganito na ang mga consequences. So if you're not okay, if you have jealousy, bitterness, galit ka, addict ka, homosexual, kung meron kang problema sa greed, waldas ka, whatever kinds of problems you have in your life, welcome to the human race. Kabahagi <laughs> ka. You, you know, but listen to me. Kung hindi ka okay, it doesn't mean God loves you less. Because ang pagmamahal sa'yo is not basi sa performance mo or sa condition mo. The love of God is based on Jesus. And the acceptance that God has about you is connected directly to the acceptance that God has to Jesus. Tamay ka lang, nakikiride on ka 
It's a perfection ni Jesus. And when God looks at you, he says, wow, my beloved son, my daughter, I'm proud of you. Because he sees Jesus. So if you are not okay, hindi ko nakikita yan sa labas. Maaring if you have a broken leg or if you, you are blind or kung meron kang, uh, you know, na-accidente ka, you have diabetes, cancer, maaring makikita natin mo yan. But if you're sick in your soul, if you're sin-sick, you have disease in your emotions, hindi nakikita ng mga tao yan. You can smile and we will never know. <laughs> Praise hallelujah. Everything is fine. Pero sa totoo, hindi naman. So if you are in that condition na hindi ka okay, it doesn't mean God loves you less. And, mahalaga din ito, it doesn't mean that you love God less. I believe you still love God. Or else you will not be here today. I believe that you want to love God. You, you want to do right. But there's something keeping you from being okay. And John chapter 10, verse 10, sabi ni Jesus, the thief, that's the devil, the thief comes to kill and steal and destroy. But I have come that you could have life, the full, the abundant life. So hindi big sabihin, pag hindi ka okay, it doesn't mean God loves you less. It just means the devil found a way to get into your life. He found a way to get into your family, into your finances. He got into your health, into your emotions. And somehow, meron siyang isang paa sa pintuan ng buhay mo to limit you, to steal away your destiny, to take away your joy, to take away God's best for you. Because God loves you and He wants something good for you. Nabanggit ko last week na, yung illustration na gusto kong ibigay yung anak ko ng, gusto ko siyang ibigay ng ice cream sa anak ko so bumila ko ng ice cream pagdating ko sa playground na doon si Zion ibibigay ko sana yung ice cream kita ko siya galing siya sa putik gasgas ang katawan damit niya marumi and yung bibig niya punong-puno ng buhangin <laughs> which in fact when I see my son in that condition that's not a good condition, di ba? He's not okay. But I don't love him less dahil ganun ang condition niya. In fact, yung pagmamahal ko sa kanya wants to clean him up, wants to help him spit out that dirt because I have something better to put in your mouth. So, the point is this, and write this down, number one, that it's okay to be not okay. But it's not okay to stay not okay. Kunyo? <laughs> Nag-gets nyo? Hindi dapat manatili sa status na hindi tayo okay. Okay? So it's okay. Sige, guluhin natin. It's okay to be not okay. But it's not okay to be okay with not being okay. Gusto mo mas magulo pa? Itagalog natin. <laughs> hindi okay, manatiling hindi okay. Okay? Good. One more time. Hindi okay na manatiling maging hindi okay. Because God loves you as you are today. Maski insecured ka, maski, you know, ma, uh, your broken family, may, maski yung history, yung, yung track record mo, puro palpak, maraming kasalanan, may mga sikreto, may mga dumi sa buhay mo. If you have messed up your life, if you have hurt yourself and hurt other people, if you are dysfunctional, you have habits, you have problems inside your personality, I'm telling you, God still loves you the same. He doesn't love you less. And it's okay. If you're, as long as you're on the way to becoming okay. You're on the way, on the process. You see, if the sick 
came to Jesus, they did not stay sick. Right? Nakauwi sila ng healthy. Yung mga pilay, yung mga, mga blind, once na na-encounter sila si Jesus, when they, when they met Jesus, ibang iba sila sa pag-uwi. They were different. They did not stay blind. Being with Jesus does not make you worse. It makes you better. Kaya, please, pag hindi ka okay, wag mong iwasan ang presensya ng Diyos. Don't avoid God. Don't avoid coming to church. Even if kagabi, ko ano ano ginagawa mong worst sin. Huwag mong isipin na hindi ako qualified. Jesus said it like this, it's not the healthy people that need a doctor. It's the sick. Sila talaga ang kailangan ng doctor. But the doctor heals. The doctor makes better. So even the dead naging buhay. Remember the story ng prodigal son, yung, yung anak na bunso na lumayo, winaldas na yung mana niya, and he spent his life wild living, wasting everything. Nung nagsisi siya, bumalik siya sa bahay ng papa niya. Can you imagine? Di ba? Nagtrabaho siya sa babuyan. Can you just imagine kung anong itsura ng mga damit niya? Kung anong bantot na lumalabas sa bibig niya? <laughs> kung ano yung amoy niya? Amoy tae, amoy babuan, eh, eh, you know, bababoy, and then yung face and everything. He probably didn't shave, he didn't take a bath. Can you just imagine how the father saw him in that condition but did not love him less? The father even hugged him. Niyakap niya. Kissed him. Somebody say, ew. But the father kissed him in that condition. And then Agad, Agad put a robe on him. A new clothes. And the robe represents a righteousness. The standing na katanggap-tanggap sa kanyang father. Walang sagabal sa relationship nila. Maski ganun ang condition niya. And then the father brings him into the house. Not bilang alipin or gardener or you know, worker lang. Bilang anak. Even in that condition. Pero inside the house, I'm sure may shower. I'm sure may mga, may mga processes to go from dirty to clean. And so in John chapter 8, makikita natin dito sa Situ- story ng yung babae na nahuli siya sa kasalanan. Adultery. And that woman was brought to Jesus. Ang, ang pakikipag-deal ni Jesus sa babae na yan, himbis na batuin siya, himbis na death penalty, sabi ni Jesus, neither do I condemn you. Ang ibinigay ni Jesus sa babae nito, ng sinful woman, is the gift of no condemnation. He says, I don't condemn you. So go now and leave your life of sin. Hindi niya sinabi, stop sinning. And if you stop sinning, I won't condemn you. Walang ganyanan. Baliktad. Ang sabi niya, no string attached. I don't condemn you. Now, now, na nakatanggap ka ng gift of no condemnation, now you're empowered to go and sin no more. Now you have the ability, which before you, you have no choice. You're a sinner. You, you can't help yourself. But now, nakatanggap ka ng gift of no condemnation, may pagasa ka na. Because you're not condemned, it will change you. Mga kapatid, listen. God will not accept you if you change your life. God already accepts you. And that gives you the power to change your life. Before you receive the acceptance of Jesus, you have no power to change yours. You, there's nothing you can do. We've already, diba? We've already tried that. We already tried to be better, do good, and it doesn't work. It takes the grace of God. It takes the gift of no condemnation. Then, 
You're not performing. You're not getting better to make God like you. You're standing on the confidence God already loves me. He already accepts me. It dahil doon, it frees me without pressure, without burden. I can do good now. So here's letter A, that God loves you as you are. But He won't leave you that way. He won't leave you that way. He will, he, he will bring a change. And last week, pinag-usapan natin about being not okay. And I want you to hear from someone na inako yung message na yan. Grinab niya yung teachings and isinabuhay niya. So let's hear from Diana. Would you share about the change that God did in your life? Thank you, Pastor. Uh, yun. Uh, very timely yung topic ni Pastor. Dati kasi ako hindi okay. Honestly, I'm not okay with the relationships I have as a family, with my lola, mama, papa, with my siblings, and also sa school, relationships sa chairman. Lahat ng relationship hindi okay. At dahil doon, super apektado ako. And I nag-decide ako na magstay na lang sa bahay, sa room, mag-focus sa situation ko na I'm not okay. And sabi ni pastor sa, sa teaching niya last week, turn towards God and not away from Him. Sabi ko, grabe yan ah. Mali pala yung ginawa ko dati na nag-focus ako sa kung ano yung sitwasyon ko. Kasi kung nakafocus ka sa sitwasyon mo, nabubulag ka eh. Hindi mo kilala yung Panginoon mo. Nakafocus ka, sa, ka kasi sa sarili mo. At yun ako dati. Pero yung sinabi ni Pastor, turn towards God. Nag-humble down ako, Lord, alam ko hindi ako okay. Pero pag, nasa, pag ako nasa inyo, it will be okay. And sabi niya pa, don't be disappointed in yourself. And mag-focus ka lang kung sino si God sa life mo. At yun, doon ako nag-focus. Nag-soak in sa word niya. Nag-spend time. Doon nalaman ko kung sino ako sa Panginoon. And now, kaya ko nang sagutin yung dating tinatanong nila, kamusta ka? Dati sagot ko, <laughs> yeah, okay lang. Yung may pigil sa loob. Pero ngayon, masasabi ko na that I am very, very okay. Yan. It's good. So God loves you as you are, but won't leave you in that condition. Parang nakita ko si, imagine nakit, makita ko yung anak ko, three years old, and he makes a mess. Minsan talagang messy ang three-year-old. You know, wala siyang pakialam kung mamantya ng damit niya, kung anong pasok sa buhok niya, and puts dirty things in his mouth. Pag makita ko siya, full of putik and everything, Kahit nasa ganun ang condition niya, I don't love him less in that condition. I just want to make him better. So God loves you as is, where is, kahit anong condition ang buhay mo, but He wants to clean you up and put something better in your mouth. Put something better in your life. San tayo, we've been full of sin, we've been full of uh, hurts, backgrounds, that God wants to make it better. So, Another point is this. Listen to me. Whatever you, wherever you are, kung anong condition mo ngayon, don't make that your permanent address. It's not your permanent address. Uh, hindi naman kailangan manatili ka doon. Hindi naman masama na suma, sumama, sumama ang loob. Kung ikaw ay nagtampo, may bitterness, may unforgiveness, hindi naman masama huwag tagalan. Uh-huh. Hindi naman masama na maranasan ng inggit, nagrebelde, mangluloko, whatever, but huwag tagalan doon. Hindi masama na galing ka sa sakit, galing ka sa hirap, 
Pero wag mang patayo ng bahay o wag, wag, wag mong gawin permanent address ang biguan city. <laughs> Hindi naman yan ang destiny mo. Psalms chapter 23 is very famous but it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Kuha, kuha mo yung, I walk through. Hindi niya sinabi niya, even though I stay for a long time in the shadow of death. No, I walk through it. Passing through lang eh. You don't have to put up your house in the valley of shadow of death. Hindi doon na ka camp out doon. You walk through. So everybody just say, I'm passing through. I'm not perfect, but I'm on the way. See, I'm on the way. Pag ikaw na kasakay sa bus na papuntang Manila, and then alam na mga, alam ng lahat na dapat na sa Manila ka na. And on the bus, and nag stop over sa season for one hour stop over. And nakita kanila doon sa season pangasina. Eh? Bakit wala, wala sa Manila? Kala ko na sa Manila ka. Pwede mong sabihin, wala pa ako sa Manila, but I'm on the way. Kita mo yung bus na yan? Nakasakay ako sa bus na yan. May pwesto ako dyan sa bus na yan. And I'm not, I haven't arrived yet at my destination, but I'm on the way. I have a seat on that bus. See? So, uy, bakit ganyan ka? Sabi mo, kristyano ka, tapos ganyan pa rin ang ugali mo. Oo, hindi pa ako naka-arrive. But I'm on the way. But ganyan ang ugali mo. Sabi mo, di ba? Sabi mo, nag attend ka sa SFCC. Ganyan ba ang turo nila sa'yo? <laughs> Sabi nyo, you know, I'm not okay yet, but I, it's gonna be okay because I'm on the way to being okay. Nag-gets? I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm at SFC. Taka SFCC na ako. So I'm on the way. Ako yung naka-enroll sa Pepsol Academy. Nasa pre-encounter, you know. I, I, I registered in advance for the encounter retreat. So hindi pa ako, hindi pa ako totally okay, but I'm on the way to becoming okay. Mayroon nagme-mentor sa akin and I'm nakaupo, nakapwesto na ako sa bus na kung saan darating sa mas magandang status. Does that make sense? Yes. San ka nang galing? Galing sa hirap. Galing sa suliranin. Galing sa problems. But I tell you, you don't have to stay there. Don't get bitter. Get better. <laughs> because God understands you. He cares and He wants to help. Alright, number two. Is that okay? Did May natutunan ba kayo? Yes. Number two is this. Recognize the consequences of sin. Dahil hindi tayo okay because of sin. Either yung sin ko or sin ng iba. Pero lahat ng mga problema, lahat ng mga gulo sa buhay is because of some kind of sin. Some kind of rebellion against God. Some kind of, you know, the word sin means missing the mark. It means you tried to hit the bullseye but you just missed. <laughs> and all of us have tried to do right but we missed. And there are consequences. There are, you know, bad results. And that's why we're tasting the bad results. Hindi okay. Because of missing the mark of God. Hindi tayo naging disipulo. And it causes problems. Hindi tayo nag-discipline. Hindi tayo na, na, nalaman ng totoo. We believe the lie. When I'm emotionally screwed up, it's because my not thinking straight. When there's problems in the family, it's because I was selfish. I was fearful. I have insecurities. Pag hindi ka okay, there's, those are the consequences of different kind of sin. So dapat ma-recognize natin kung saan galing yung status of being not okay. Now, at SFCC, you will find out, you will know, hindi tayo sin conscious. Hindi tayo judgmental. We don't highlight your sins. We don't look in our lives, analyze na ang daming kasalanan, kasalanan ganito, bawal na ganyan, bawal. We don't details and become fault-finding about sins. The fact na lahat tayo nakakasala, that's a given. That's a, we, we, we all have 
problems. So we don't highlight sins because God's grace is bigger than all your sins. Are you following me? Kahit anong kasalanan mo, walang kasalanan na higit sa biyaya ng Diyos. No sin that you ever commit can outwash or overpower God's grace. God's grace always wins. God's grace is bigger than all of your sin. But listen, hindi mo ma-appreciate ang grace ng Diyos kung hindi mo nakikita yung kasamaan ng kasalanan. Hindi mo ma-appreciate na how much God loves you until you see what sin did to you. How ugly is sin. Pait. Ang kasalanan, grabe. Ang pangit ng results. Dahil sa kasalanan, that's why we had a broken family. That's why we had depression. That's why there is gulo. It, the sins of mankind damage and destroy and kill our lives. So, hindi ko sinasabi na baliwala ang grace ng Diyos. The grace of God is why we are saved. It's why we have hope. But the grace does not make sin safe for you. Could still have consequences. Pero hindi mo recognize yung dakilang pagmamahal ng Diyos until you look at how hurtful is a life of sin. And you won't come to the Savior. Hindi mo maaring mapalapit sa Savior Jesus until you realize na hindi ko kayang iligtas ang sarili ko. Saka na lang ka Lord, Jesus, you got to save me. Because if you don't save me, wala. I'm dead. I can't save myself. Hindi ko kaya. You know, first, uh, Second Peter chapter two, chapter one, verse six. It's talking about spiritual growth. You know, maturing. Sabi niya, dagdagan mo sa buhay mo ang faith, ang moral excellence, ang knowledge, self-control, patient endurance. You know, godliness. Be, have, have brotherly love. Dagdagan mo ano, na love for all people. It says the more that you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be. Sino gusto maging productive and useful? Yeah. So yeah, put this in your life. But so yeah, the people or those people that do not develop, they fail to develop in this way. They are short-sighted. Hindi makikita yung big picture. Bulag. And nakakalimutan nila that they have been forgiven so much of their past sins. See? And you have to re- remember that the grace of God trains us to move on. To move on. If hindi ka okay, basta tanggapin mo ang biyaya ng Diyos and it will empower you to move on. Titus chapter 2 verse 12 says, The grace of God teaches us to have no more to do with godlessness or the desires of the world. Taragang, it leads us to reject wickedness and the lust of the world. It trains us to avoid ungodliness. Yun po ang effect ng grace. The effect of sin, hindi okay. The effect of grace, it trains us to move on, to get better. Remember though, it's a process. So number three, write this down. That recognize that you are a work in progress. Can you say that? Say, I am a work in progress. Dapat merong akong nakatatak dito, maybe tattoo, or may signboard na it says, under construction. Yeah, yeah. Under construction. You know? Imbis na men at work, dapat may t-shirt, God at work. You know? Because God is working inside of me. I'm a walking construction site. <laughs> There's always materials coming in and, and trash to be taken out. And if you look at me, you don't see a finished, perfect, Specimen. <laughs> you see, a constru- I'm under construction, but I'm on the process. And so are you. 
And you know, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Do not despise. Huwag mong liitin. Huwag mong baliwalain ang small beginnings. For the Lord, listen to this, the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. So, maski ikaw ay nagsisimula pa lang, you're just taking baby step bilang isang disciple of Jesus. Hindi ka pa ayos, hindi, hindi okay ang buhay mo, but you're just testing, you're just, you want to try to follow Jesus, you want to try to get better, and, and parang you're just starting on the way. Tuwang tuwa si God sa'yo. Maski hindi pa ayos ang buhay mo, family mo, gulo, your, ab- your habits, your, your attitude, but the Lord is so happy. Sabi sa Biblia, He rejoices to see the work begin. I'm still on the way. I'm a work in progress. You know, uh, even me, I know, hindi ako sa level na gusto kong maging. Gusto kong sa le- next level as a leader, as a, as a loving husband, as an effective father, I'm not where I should be. I'm not the kind of person I want to be. But I thank God I'm not the person I used to be. Are you following me? Don't you thank God? At least I'm not where I could have been. Kung hindi sana ako naging follower of Jesus, I would be dead or in jail or in debt, my life would be a mess. Salamat sa Dios. Na hindi pa ako okay na in every way, there's still more, but I'm thankful that I'm not where I could have been. And God is not finished with me because I'm a work in progress. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, I'm still a work in progress. Yan. <laughs> Tingnan mo, tingnan mo to. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, We are God's masterpiece. Silipin mo ang katabi mo kung mukhang masterpiece. Masterpiece ba yan? Or modern art? Alam mo yung, yung modern art? Na abstract. Abnormal. <laughs> but the Bible says we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Meron palang plano ang Dios for my life. Meron pala siyang destiny. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And so, nung pinanganak tayo, as biologically birthed into this world, just like Adam, God created Adam in his own image. Well, that didn't work because we all sinned and we destroyed that image. But when you receive Christ and you accept because of Christ, the first one who was born again was Jesus. He was resurrected. And when we put faith in Him, nakiki ride on tayo sa kanyang divine regeneration. And we become born anew. And God created you once biologically. But He wants to recreate you now, spiritually. My sense of Does that make sense? And so, you're a masterpiece. But you're not finished yet. Imagine na if you have the chance na makakita ka ng isang famous painter, a modern day Picasso, or Rembrandt, Van Gogh. And you watch, go to their art studio. Makikita mo sila painting and meron silang colors and may lines and splash the paper and makikita mo. 
And then, lapitin mo sila. Sabi mo, ang pangit. Ang pangit ng drawing mo. Grade 2 ka na ba? Ano ba yan? And then, sasabihin niya sa'yo, Tika, tika! Hindi pa tapos. Hindi pa finished. I'm just still working on it. Balikan mo, pag tapos na, makikita mo, worth millions ito. Masterpiece yan eh. E kung masterpiece ni, ni, ni Picasso, walang kwenta yan compared sa masterpiece ni God. And that's you. You're worth millions. You're worth billions. Why? Meron. Diyos, kumagawa sa'yo. He's recreating you. You're His masterpiece. So just imagine, if you see it right now, wala, walang kwenta yan. But it's not yet finished. Pag, lumap, pag lumabas ka sa bukid during, during uh, planting season, andyan, nakatayo si farmer, andyan. Tanim siya ng maraming gulay. And then you ask him, asan na yung gulay? Bakit? Hector, hector dito, wala naman. Luto sana ako ng pinakbet, wala namang gulay. Tsaka, katatanim ko lang, hindi pa lumalabas. Pero I promise, this will be full of vegetables at the right season. E wala akong nakikita eh. Bogus yung farm mo na yan. No, because you have to wait. It's, it's, in, it's in the process. Diba? Ganon din, pag uh, building sa construction site. Ano ba ito? Messy ito. Sore eye sa community. Hindi pa tapos eh. Under construction ito. Magiging McDonald's ito. <laughs> Magiging napakagandang building ito. So do you understand that if you see your life or kung tingin mo sa sarili mong buhay, just right now lang. Yan lang kikita mo. Ang gulo, hindi okay. Messed up ang relationships mo. Messed up ang mindset mo. The way you think. The way you behave. The way you talk. Nako, mukhang hindi godly, mukhang hindi kristyano. Pero you know what? You could just say, God does not see me only sa aking current situation. God sees kung sino ako magiging kay Kristo. Si tayo, humans, we are stuck in time. Hindi tayo pwedeng pumunta sa 2015, kaagad. Hindi rin tayo pwedeng bumalik sa 2013. Stuck tayo dito sa 2014. Wala kang magagawa. Dito lang tayo. Pero sa Diyos, walang limitation na ganun. Nakikita niya ang buong time span, yung buong ages. Hindi siya limited. So pwede siyang turuan kung saan. And God sees you not only who you are now, what you do now, anong ugali mo ngayon, nakikita ng Diyos kung sino ka magiging pagkatapos. Who you will be when Christ is formed inside of your character. And I tell you what, He likes what He sees. Kaya ang tawag niya sa'yo, masterpiece. <laughs> Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it says that God gives life. I like that. God gives life to the dead and calls things that don't exist into existence. Wow! Things that don't exist. Ibig sabihin yung mga good na alam ko dapat ginagawa ko na when in fact, dapat, pero hindi naman existing yun sa buhay ko. God will call it into existence. Ibig sabihin yung mga things that I should be doing, things I should not be doing, yung mga current realities which are not good, hindi nakaka-encourage, but God will call them and they will become a reality. Matutupad ang salita ng Diyos if you believe that. So maski na kikita mo yung nanay nagluluto, you said, ano ba yan? Yaki! Kasi makikita mo, baboy, Amoy isda, ang yaki yung kanyang halo na may raw eggs. Yaki ba yan? I, I don't want to eat that. Sasabihin ni nanay, di pa tapos eh. Niluluto ko pa. Wait. Just wait. Magiging masarap na putahe ito. So, you have to understand, we're just a work in progress. Right? So, even if you have 
fellow Christians, mga churchmates, mga disciples na mini-mentor, and their lives are not perfect. They don't follow. Pasaway sila. <laughs> Nagtatampo. Nagri-rebelde. It's okay. Because they are also a work in progress. You know how patient is God to me? Grabe. God is so patient. And I'm, so, I'm just so thankful He did not give up on me. And he's, listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. God will not give up on you. I don't care what is your condition right now. Kung gano ka sama, kung gano ka ugly is your spirit, kung where you've been, what you've done, what habits you have, what secrets you have, God loves you as is, where is, and He will not give up on you. It says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, that God who began the good work within you will continue His work until it is finished. Did you get that? Yes. All right. God's not dead and God's not done. He's working in you and He will even work through you. So everybody say, I'm in the process. And number four, be humble enough to get help. To get help. Because we are not meant to handle life on our own, alone. Kadalasan kasi, hindi tayo humbly enough to ask for help. Kaya yung profession, alam mo, yung, yung pag yung, yung studies ko is counseling psychology. Kasi noon, ang plano ko talaga, I will be a psychologist, a counselor. Sa states, uso yan. Pagdatito, ka sa, pagdatito ko sa Pilipinas, walang market for that kind of job. Because Filipinos don't like to admit I'm cuckoo. <laughs> I've got problems. Filipinos don't like nakakahiya, naaminin na I'm not okay. My family's not okay. You know? Pag may ganun na, sasabihin na I need counseling. It wasn't, it wasn't, they, will, they will walk away from you. You might be afraid they will reject me. They will say, Uy, I'm crazy. I'm dysfunctional. Pero sa totoo lang, don't you agree? We all have problems. We all need help. We all need prayer. We all need someone to encourage us sometimes. Lahat tayo kailangan ng, ng merong magsasalita sa atin na life, word of God, you know, the truth. Kasi gumugulo sa pag-iisip natin is puro lie. Ano yung lie? Walang nagmamahal sa akin. Kailangan natin na someone to say, that's a lie. Marami nagmamahal sa'yo. Si God muna. You know, or, you know, ang daming na nagchismis about me. That's a lie. Wala silang pakiram sa'yo. <laughs> They're not thinking of you. So, minsan, we just need someone else to, see, to speak to us, to help us, to encourage us, to pray for us. So don't be too proud na hindi ka nag ask for help. Huwag mong isolo ang sarili mong mga problema. It says in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 that two people are better than one. Bakit? Because if one falls, okay, if one, maybe he falls into sin, he falls to discouragement, he falls to you know temptation he falls in his marriage his 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 friends are falling apart his finances are falling apart if one falls what happens the other can help his friend get up but how tragic it is for the one who is all alone when he falls there is no one to help him get up so we all need a coach we all need accountability. Dapat i-embrace natin ang accountability. Embrace natin a coach. Of course, kay God first. Siya yung pinaka-rescuer natin. God, I need help. 
So we humble ourselves. Nagpapakumbaba, Lord, hindi ko kayang ayusin ang sarili kong situation. Alam mo, madalas pag medyo nag-kiss-kiss na kami ni Bambi, pag may naga, alam mo naman sa marriage, sino sa inyo may mga ganyan-ganyan sa marriage na medyo oh, conflict of opinions, conflict of po- Ako lang bagay isa? Okay, alright, thank you. May mga friends ako dito na nakaka-relate sa marriage. What I would do is I will just pray to God. I will say, God, I don't know how to be a husband to her. I don't know, I don't understand women. <laughs> they are from another planet. <laughs> ibang culture to, ibang species ito. Hindi ko siya maintindihan. And God, I cannot control her. I cannot, I don't know what to do. So I say, God, I need help in my marriage. Would you help me to see what I should see? And please help her to also change. <laughs> what she, <laughs> alam mo naman yung ganun. But, but I, I, I would humble myself. Because I know I'm not an expert. I know I'm not perfect. I need help. And so first we cry out to God. Secondly, we need a coach. We need a leader in the faith to help us. Lahat ng champion, kahit anong sport, they need coach. You want to be a champion in life? Yan ang vision ng church is to produce champions in life. And guys, listen to me. I love you. And I want you to be a champion in life. But you need a coach. You need a mentor. You need a leader. You cannot make it as a champion. You cannot become a champion just because you attend Mass every once a, a week. And you sit there and you watch the show. You know, if it's funny, you laugh a little. Then after that, you just go home. You will not be a champion in life pagka ganyan lang. Kahit sumasangayon ka sa katotohanan, you need a coach. You need mentoring. And it's not about the mentoring. It's about yung dynamic na nagpapakumbaba ka to receive coaching. Do you think Manny Pacquiao is stronger than Freddy Roach? He's the coach, right? Coach Roach. Sino mas malakas sa ngayon? Manny Pacquiao or Freddy Roach? Do you think Manny Pacquiao can knock out Freddy Roach? Yes, of course. Pero siya ang coach. It doesn't matter about that. The point is, hindi sasabihin ni Manny kay Freddy na, huwag mong turun ako, I, I can beat you. Mas magaling naman ako sa'yo. Why, ba, 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 ikaw ang nagtuturo sa akin. Mas magaling naman ako kaysa sa'yo, old man. See, he won't say that. Kasi why? Siya yung coach. Hindi, niya kailang, hindi na kailangan i-compare ang sarili niya sa coach. Hindi naman kalaban si coach. The coach is there to help him see yung hindi na niya kikita sa sarili niya. The coach is there to, to, to give him tips and to help him to become a champion. So, we need to have humility to ask for help, to receive a coach, to receive a connection with a, a lifeline. Kaya I, I encourage you, be in a cell group. Mag-enroll ka sa ating San Fernando Christian Community has what we call Pepsol Academy. That's an in-house training. And actually, this afternoon, may graduation. Kung gusto mong paraon, you can come and watch the graduation. I think almost 100 people are graduating from the pre-encounter. And these are teachings, this is coaching. Hindi lang siya lecture, lecture, lecture. Meron talagang nag, uh, ano, nakatutok sa'yo to help you become a champion. It doesn't mean they're better than you. That's not the point. The point is you humble yourself and you say, I need help. James chapter 5, verse 3 to 15 talks about if you're sick, if you're hurting, kung down na down ka, call the church leader. Let them pray for you. Let them anoint you. The believing prayer will heal you. Jesus will put you on your feet. And if you've sinned, you'll be forgiven and healed inside and out. So wag mong isipin na kasalanan ko is already too big. I cannot be forgiven. You can. Don't be for, don't, wag mong isipin na 
Ayaw kong maging totoo. Ayaw kong maging transparent. Ayaw kong aminin yung mga weaknesses ko. Baka hindi ako welcome dito. Baka i-reject nila ako. Or kung ano ang isipin nila about me. No, don't think that. Just be humble enough to ask for help. Lalo na when you're not doing well, hindi mo kailangan sabihin, hey, I'm okay. Kung saan ka na? I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, pwede mong sabihin, hindi big sabihin na kailangan i-announce sa microphone sa lahat kung ano yung gulo ng family mo. You don't have to do that. But there's a one or maybe just two uh, the, the, the leaders na nagmamalasakit sa championship mo that you can be, and you just share with them. You say, you know what? I've been struggling and I need prayer. Would you just pray for me? Would you just, would you just watch me for the next few months? I'm going through a, a tough season. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. But just help me get through this. Alam mo, pag ganyan, babangon ka. You will be a champion. Because we all need help. And some of you, paulit-ulit yung status mo na hindi okay. Maybe years later, the same problem noon, na-recycle lang. And some of you, you, you just feel like, my life is no good. And probably, akala mo because of, you know, pinaganak ka ng hirap, galing sa hirap, or I married the wrong person. Kaya, wala na, ruined. Buhay ko, wala na, because I married the wrong person. Or yung mga anak ko, nako, wala ang pag-asa sila. Pasaway, ganyan. And maybe you think there's no hope because your life is already like this. Let me tell you, I think the reason why paulit-ulit yung problema is because you didn't ask for help. You're trying to do it on your own. So be humble enough to ask for help. And the last point, dito tayo magtatapos. The last point is this. Be generous enough to give help. <laughs> yeah? Be humble enough to get help, but be generous enough to give help. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Naniniwala ba tayo doon? So, maski na ikaw ay nasa status na sabi mo, I'm not okay, hindi pa okay yung buhay ko, I'm not doing well, but I'm on the road. I'm getting better. Even though hindi pa totally ayos ang situation mo, pwede kang tumulong sa iba. Maniwala ka, mayroong mas hindi okay sa, kaysa sa'yo. Meron talagang na needs that needs help too. So open your eyes. Huwag mong isipin na ayosin ko muna yung sarili ko bago ako makatulong sa iba. No. Even in the process, you're just still on the process, pwede kang maging help sa iba na nagsisimula pa lang. So as you, here's the good news. As you help other people, you find out na ikaw din parang mas nagiging okay na rin. You start becoming okay as you help others. It says in Galatians 6 verse 2 that if you carry each other's burdens, this is the way you fulfill the law of Christ because you carry each other's burdens. So mga kapatid, if you're not doing okay, it's okay. God loves you just the same. He doesn't love you less. And I believe you don't love God less but listen to me. If you will move, if you will move out of it, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck up in whatever sin, in whatever um, addictions, whatever problems, those attitudes. Don't be stuck up there, because God wants something better for you. It doesn't mean He loves you less. But if you get better. He, and if you start getting better, you do good, He will not love you more. But you will love Him more. Kung ikaw ay nasa, nastuck sa kasalanan, God doesn't love you less. But maybe, you're not receiving His love as much. So as you start getting better, He loves you the same, but you love Him more and more. And you enjoy Him more and more. And yun ang masarap na buhay when you can really 
enjoy God and all His benefits. And it starts with Jesus. Kasi in the first place, ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa atin, hindi base sa atin. You're not that lovable and I'm not that acceptable by myself. But we became lovable not because we were lovable, but because God is loving. Kuha nyo? He just chose to love you. Jesus died for you without asking your permission. He died for you na hindi ka pa pinanganak. Ang Diyos pinatawad ang lahat ng mga kasalanan mo bago ka humingi ng pagpatawad. He forgave you before you said sorry. Before na nako ka na I'll change, magbabago na ako, hindi ka pa nag-promise, hindi ka pa nagbago, pinatawad ka na ng Diyos. Pero walang pakinabang sa'yo until you receive that. Until you believe it and say, yeah, I received that. I accept your offer. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Sino nagmamahal kay Lord dito? Good. You know what? Before you loved God, He already loved you. Before you accepted Jesus, He already accepted you. Panahon na mag-response tayo. Maring, let's close our eyes right now. Let's pray together. Panginoon Diyos, salamat sa pagtanggap mo sa amin, sa pagmahal, sa pagmamahal mo sa amin. And we thank you that even in this condition, whatever, wherever, as is, how is, that you still loved us. And we receive that love. Thank you for your commitment po sa amin to help us get unstuck, to help us move on in life, to become a champion. Give us, Lord, a, a focus on your grace and not our sin. But help us to remember that you have forgiven so much and we want to move away from the past. We want to move away from the gulo, from the sin, from the, from the rebellion, from the wrong attitudes, and help us to be humble enough to say, I need help. We ask your help today. And we thank you, Lord. If you haven't received Jesus, kung hindi pa nakatanggap kay Jesus, just do like this. Ilagay mo ang kamay mo dito sa dibdib mo. And just feel your heart beat. Now say this prayer. Say, Jesus, ipinapasok kita sa aking buhay. Come on, say it from your heart. Say, ipinapasok kita sa aking buhay. Come and forgive me. Heal me and change me. I accept you because you first accepted me. And I love you because you first loved me. Salamat sa kaligtasan na ibinigay mo sa akin as a gift. I accept, I receive, and I'm willing to follow your way Thank you, God, for your love and for your work in our lives. Through Jesus, we pray. Amen. We hope you enjoy listening to today's teachings from Tim Warden. For more life-changing audio and video teaching resources, call the San Fernando Christian Community at 0919-846-6849 or visit our website at christian.com.ph and add us on facebook.com slash sfccphilippines. If you're ever in La Union, visit us along Ortiga Highway, Santiago Norte, San Fernando City.